previously on The Romance and Stargirl. Two episodes in a row? They're gonna spoil me with this stuff when some other thing had taken over her body. I mean, obviously Yolanda and Rick would have been setting up a pyre to burn the witch. And a woman with your skills it needs to be appreciated. Please, please don't, please don't tell me you're doing love triangle. Later. Yeah. But pull up a chair, please. No, uh, they can have their meeting later. Don't tell me you're hanging out Rick. with that creep. He's not a creep. Courtney. Courtney. Way to stand up to friends for being jerks about your boyfriend. Hun, how was your math test? Horrible. I cheated. You what? I can't talk right now. I'm in the middle of a JSA meeting. <laughs> hey, mom. Hey, dad. I cheated in class. I can't talk now. Goodbye. <laughs> People really do change. Yeah, but you look a little sinister right now. Welcome to Couple Reviews, where it has only been 42 years. And by 42 years, I mean one week since the last episode of Stargirl. In the last episode, we found out that Courtney needs new friends. So, let's, let's see if she gets any better friends than the one she has. Friends she has right now simply won't do, at least not in their current state. Your learning is all. I love how Cameron's had more of a presence in this season. I think ultimately, maybe it's all God's plan. It feels like this is the right season to start the romance in Stargirl. Because there's so much more to talk about than there would have been. And if I if I had just done if I had done this for I'm season kick. one, two, I would have been yes. Had either had short videos or I would have hang on. Knew it. I'm gonna kick her ass. That was to, huh? That was not actually in the previous episode. But I think uh, if I had done episode by episode reactions to the first two seasons, I I wouldn't have had that much romance to talk about. So I think this kind of worked out for me. This episode's called The Betrayal, but who's betraying who? There's quite a few candidates for someone who could betray someone else. Rick, what? Did you just bust into the gym? You, you're, did you just vandalize the gym so you can get gym workout for free? Courtney really does need new friends. Do you remember when Rick was a sympathizable character? When he was a tortured soul? He's always trying to do right by his friends. Do you remember that? You had cameras set up in the gym because you knew that he would be breaking into there to... And you knew to be watching that camera right at, at this moment because you knew that he would be busting into the gym at this time. And you stayed up specifically to watch... What even is that? What even is this? What is this puzzle that you... What even is this? I'm not asking forgiveness for what I've done. Oh, then why are you here then? I'm asking forgiveness for what I'm about to do. It... Well, why didn't you just come back after the facts? Why did... Where's Courtney? I should update her. She already left. Oh this yeah, early? she has better things to do. Any idea where? From what Yolanda said last night, she was meeting with Icicle's kid, Cameron McKent. Hooray! I guess they know who she has a crush on now. Keep focusing on the good, those who you love, and the love I know you have for the rest of the world. Isn't there a better place to practice the ice powers? You're gonna kill all your flowers. My coach told me the same thing. On the gymnastics team back in California. On the gymnastics team back in... And all your flowers are dead. It's my dad. Oh. Ooh. I was hoping for your mom. That came out wrong, but you know what I meant. It's beautiful. You know that it's not beautiful. What if she doesn't eat sugar? Well, then she can eat the flowers. Why are two boys coming at her with chocolate and flowers? I don't want a love triangle. This show is too good for a love triangle. 
I don't want to come back here every single week and have to talk about love triangle every single week. <laughs> oh, I hate when solicitors knock on the door instead of ringing the doorbell. No. By the way, I just realized Cindy and Rick are both living alone without adults and they're both minors. Are the laws different over there or something? Or did have they just not gotten caught? I am fine with her having a crush, but it's Cameron McKent. I mean, it's the grandparents I'm concerned about. They definitely knew something about the mind machine that Jordan was building. Yeah, well, what if they know about Courtney and Mike and you and all of us? It could get real complicated. You no, know, it could get really dangerous. That's what I've been saying this whole time. Great instinct, so I think if she said Dad, something... love can cloud your judgment. Her eyes might not be as wide open as we think. We bought you some, uh, some fruit. Mm -hmm. Smoothies, our favorite. Lovely. Fresh as it comes, may we? After you, Thank Barb. You. In specialty. Uh, Ludafisk. My Ludafisk. Poison. Thank you. It looks very Delicious. Uh, interesting. It looks very interesting. For you have to do Send for the What's so poor about him, Dan? Why? We really came by just to tell you how delighted we are that Courtney and Cameron are spending a lot of time together. Yet you're here. I'm assuming you have concerns. Well, that obvious, isn't it? Wanted to come by and tell you. Tell you that Cameron is such a nice young man. He sure is. Good kid. Well, your daughter we is... I think she's very special, too. <laughs> special how? <laughs> the grandmother does not give a single laugh about anything. <laughs> yeah, we think that your son is a fine young man. Thanks, we think that your daughter is a piece of crap. I never had a chance to personally tell you how sorry I am about what happened to Jordan. Yeah, uh, are you sorry, though? Mom? Pat? What are you doing here? Well, we got a little bit of a problem. Is that right? A girl problem. Uh, see, there's this girl that we both... We both mm -hmm. like. Uh, but she won't even pay attention to us. Mm. She'll uh, barely talk to us. How do we get her to give us a chance? Ah, uh, yes. Give you both away us? I'm pretty sure what's really going on here is that Mike only wants Cindy to be a part of his team and isn't interested in her romantically like Jakeem is. The joke is that it looks like they're both interested in her and I decided it would be funnier if I just played along with that. Also, I think I said a few interesting things. Uh, I, was, I was thinking about how they seem not competitive with each other. Um, it's... Uh, it's... Uh, It sounds like they're intending to share Cindy, which they seem to, if I'm interpreting things correctly, they seem to be in an unhealthy mindset where they, they feel like they're so little that they're only, that, that like they don't deserve to have Cindy for themselves. So, th so they think that in order to be good enough, they have to like, combine their collective man points in order to be worthy of Cindy, if that makes sense, if if I'm interpreting this correctly. So maybe it's, which that could be a result of their low self-esteem. That's the word I was trying to find earlier, a second ago, low self-esteem. They, like, me, uh, Mike is the non-superhero child and uh, I just realized I don't remember his name. Hang on just a minute. And Jake <clears throat> Jakeem. Uh, and with Jakeem, he's sort of the lonely... Well, he's sort of the... They said up earlier that he feels completely alone. Well, at least he did before he made friends with the main cast in this show. So, And they're both not taken seriously by the superheroes in this show. So they need to get out of their funk and realize that they don't need to be superheroes in order to be more than half of a man, because they seem to... It's looking like they each view themselves as half a man and thus only worthy of Cindy if combined. Matt's competing for a lover's heart, huh? <laughs> oh, no. no! No, no, that's not... Oh, no, 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 they're not competing, they're sharing. Very different thing. 
It's only been one girl in all the world tamed this wild heart of mine. Since when this, I'm just hearing about this just now. You know what, they haven't even talked to each other. I don't need to waste time on them. But you know what, I feel like the shade would have made a better love interest for her, for Maria Sin. You know what, I, I don't need to devote time to shipping wars relating to Maria. Ignoring everyone. Courtney was just helping me on a new sculpture. A sculpture? Camera? I'm sure it's fine. There was really no reason for you to come all the way out here. Yeah, but then I, I never would have gotten to try Ludafisk. As long as our children are both happy, that's all that matters. Isn't that right, dear? Hmm. So he ships it? Of course. That is interesting. So it seems like they don't know about Courtney. That was humiliating. Look, your mom and I were just concerned, that's all. How many times do I have to tell people Cameron's not his father? Right, but it's the grandparents, okay? They knew Jordan was up to something. She thinks she saw his grandmother have the same type of power as Jordan did? Yeah, by the way, that both his grandmother and his grandfather have the ice powers, which are hereditary. They never touched on that yet. I don't know if there's inbreeding going on or if one, if they had another way to, for the other person to get those powers. If they wanted to hurt us, wouldn't they have done it already? Why wait? Uh, because they haven't finished brainwashing Cameron yet. So Cameron's grandfather being a wing man is an unexpected thing. I didn't think that he would be supportive of them. And what her grandma, if if they don't know about her being Star Girl, I'm not sure what she has against Courtney. She just seems to not like her for no particular reason. Maybe I shouldn't make any more assumptions, but I'm assuming that the grandmother is so critical of Courtney because whoever Cameron marries is responsible for carrying on their family legacy, I guess, so she wants to make sure the person is worthy of carrying on the family legacy, I guess. If if she really doesn't know about Stargirl, I like how Courtney was so defensive because she's had to defend Cameron before, and I mean, she just assumed that her parents would have the wrong ideas about Cameron too, but they just, exact, but you know, just her the grandparents that they're worried about, which yeah, the, 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 those are pretty troubling grandparents. Well, at least the grandmother is. Did you really block us? It's too dangerous for you to be this involved. You can't just block your parents. Don't make me push you away any more than I already have. You... Don't... You did not just say that. I know you did not just say that. You blocked your parents who have a million reasons to need to call you other than to get involved with the murderer. And you would want to tell them to not make you do anything more like that. And what kind of danger have they gotten into so far that you want to keep them out of? Danger that they wouldn't have otherwise been in if they didn't know anything. Was there any danger that they were taken out of or prevented from being in when they knew nothing? I think not. And now you think that they're better off? if they have no idea what kind of shenanigans you're getting involved with that are dangerous, and you just want them to just not ask questions about the murderers you're, you're trying to hang around. Courtney needs new friends so badly. Sure you okay? No. You better get that back. Am I screwing this up? Yes. Would you let your parents in this side of your life? Well, her parents are different from your parents. Her parents don't even treat her like a member of the family anymore. And your parents avoided divorce to be your supportive parents because to support your superhero-ness. Hell no. Well, of course not. 
But my parents suck. Oh uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yes, thank you, Yolanda. That doesn't make up for what you said about Cameron, but I will subtract a few negative points from your score. So you are you were at negative 10, now you're like at negative five. So keep that up, please. Cameron just dropped him off. Aw. Really? <laughs> you're not gonna be here while I read it, are you? Aw. It said, thank you for giving me hope. <laughs> oh. Did you give her a, back a dud laptop to plant? Oh, no, that's her laptop. It looks like the exact same laptop. In fact, it might be the hey exact <laughs> same prop. Why are they both purple? Why is Beth and Gambler's laptop both purple with no symbols or anything on it. That's confusing. I knew it was you. You scratched the window coming in the first time. I'll do more than that right now. Okay, wait. Yolanda, I didn't do it. I did not kill the gambler. Well, that's a philosophical debate and a half. I have my reasons. I would have explained and I still can. Too late. You would have, but you didn't explain. Okay. Well, you know, I'm not going to argue with uh, an excuse for an action scene, except, especially if it's a cat fight. Now... First of all, uh, that... I like how... Oh, let's back that up a second. That was good. Yeah, the, when she used the energy thing to bounce off of the ceiling to get some more force on her way down. Yeah, uh, something I got sick of in the Black Panther movie, he had this stick where he'd build up kinetic energy and then go boom, but I felt like that he just sort of used that as his only, well not his only, but half of what he would do is just go boom and have a shock wave and that would be his, like most of what he does in a battle. And he would just use it in that same way every time. I like how she used that, like her like kaboom from the hand to actually do something different, like use it in an accurate creative way other than just using it in a straightforward manner. In terms of who I think is going to win, normally if Cindy was trying to kill Yolanda then she would mop the floor with her, but right now Cindy doesn't want to kill Yolanda but Yol and she uh, is still hoping for them to be allies at some point I'm thinking, but Yolanda has had it with Cindy so keep if if Yolanda wins, keep that in mind for the for making it make sense. Oh, you do you have any idea how much these extensions cost? Court, pick up. Please pick up. She's busy with important stuff, maybe. You've always been a bitch. Same. Oh, you did not just say that after you leaked your nudes. I don't even know whose side I'm on anymore. Alright, uh, yeah, she was getting the upper hand, but uh, Cindy versus both of them, that, I don't know about that one. What the hell? But we were having so much fun, Courtney. What's happening to you? Don't act like you care. Don't act like you care? She has been the only person who has been caring for you this for the past how many episodes? It started changing when we got back from the Shadowlands. But I did not kill anyone. Let us help you. If you were just honest with us in the first place, like I asked you to be. Honest? Like you're honest? Oh, she had that coming. 
Why don't you tell them about your little secret that you've been keeping? Um, what secret is that? Hey, hang on, I know this, I know this. Um, she talked. No, she's not talking about Cameron. She can't be talking about Cameron. They know about Cameron. Um, what's the secret? Uh, I can't remember. About Cameron. Oh, they know about. We already know she's dating Cameron. Oh yeah. <laughs> I knew I knew all your secrets and I would have would have thought about it. Dating him? She's teaching that little psycho how to conjure up icicles. Just like daddy. Oh that they didn't know. Okay. Okay, I did. Well I knew that, I just didn't remember that they didn't know that. About the powers. And when Cameron finds out what you did to his dad, which he will, he'll come for you. Someone finally someone addresses it. And I hope that he wins. Cindy, you lit right after she was talking, right after she said, let us help you, you. Can we burn her now? I'll get the wood for the, for the pyre. Give me a minute. You've been training the new icicle, okay? You lied to us. Did she though? I mean, she didn't say that she wasn't training the new icicle. It, it was Cameron's secret. It wasn't mine to and tell. And Cameron mattered more than us. Yes. No, I, I promise not to tell him. Courtney, he is a threat. No, he's not. Yes, he is. And you made that decision by yourself. When all of us who are a team are at risk. You turned your back on us for him, Courtney. Well, good for her then. Listen, I don't need none of this crap about her choosing Cameron over the lot of you three because you broke into a gym, you were pre-confessing, and you were telling your parents to, quote, not make you push them away anymore, end quote. So if Courtney wants to choose Cameron over the three of you douchebags, then all the power to her. I've been on your side this whole time. Oh, you don't. Trusting everyone. Because you think we should. And you don't, and, and why is Cameron so different now? But Rick and Yolanda are right. Uh, but you should have told us, Court. Are you sh it wasn't her secret to tell. All this talk about trusting each other. Turns out the person I'm closest to is the one that can't be trusted. Oh, you. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Maybe Sylvester should lead the JSA. He already has been. Uh, sounds good. Where do they come off expecting Courtney to tell them more about Cameron when they've already been such jerks about what little they know? Rick literally told Cameron to get lost and that he is his problem and then expects to know about all of his secrets. Yolanda wanted to shun him because of who his dad is and she expects to be told about his secrets. Uh, good riddance to that. Wait, you, you have a trash can to throw that into, right? Or a shredder, better yet. I don't feel like talking, Pat. Oh. Oh, but you feel like talking to him, though. You doing okay? No. I don't know, Cameron McKent. But if you say he's a good kid who just needs some guidance, I'm on board. Thanks, Sylvester. Yeah, thanks, Sylvester. And don't worry about the others. I'll talk to him. We're gonna get through this, okay? Ah, you're one of the good ones, Sylvester. Even if you are descending into madness and might snap at any moment, you're one of the good ones. Oh, that's interesting. They didn't put any... Huh. That's a smart move that they didn't put any um, cameras in her house because they knew that she would be able to find them. Not going to say anything. I think you've been piled on enough by everyone today. <laughs> yeah, you think? Yeah. He's pretty great. Sylvester's the best. I really don't know what I'd be doing without- Do I want to do roll clips of Sylvester being the best? I mean, I could do a compilation of Sylvester attacking the Crocs and yelling insanely with the ironic text saying Sylvester being the best. But you know what? After after all that good stuff, I, I could do that, but 
After all that good stuff he said about Cameron and helping Courtney, you know, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let that one go. If he can actually figure out which pieces go where, that is some next level puzzle solving ability. You know, the funny thing is, we saw him in a, at the end of season two. Now they're building up his face reveal. You have to understand this: Cindy murdered the gambler kept insisting that she didn't murder the gambler and then got upset with people for thinking that she murdered the gambler and then the one person who actually believed her is the person that she told that is that her boyfriend is going to turn on her and she hopes that happens and she hopes that wins that's that's it. We're, we're gonna burn this witch. I'll get the fire. Would you get the kerosene? We're gonna set up a pyre and burn her. Oh, by the way, we're, I'm talking about Cindy, the character, not the the actress who plays her. Do not burn the do not burn the actress who plays her on a pyre, please. Now, when we burn her, she has regen regenerative abilities, so we're gonna have to make sure the fire lasts long enough. So it's going to need to be a big pyre. I'm thinking that it should be at least like 10 feet tall. And you make make sure that there's enough kerosene. And we'll need to find a good place in the woods where there's a, like a clearing of this dry ground where the fire won't spread. Uh, we, want, we need to be far enough away from people so they won't hear Cindy screaming, of course. And uh, the question is, we need to get what kind of rope should we get? to tie Cindy up to the stake because because not not only is she super strong she also has those blades on her hand that she can use to cut herself free I'm gonna look up best kinds of rope for tying up witches it should be here in a few days maybe may, hopefully we'll get that rope before the next episode of star girl so we'll be able to burn her in time question with the with the type of fire we're going to get i'm wondering how do we light it because if we use a lighter if we need to like toss it onto the to the kerosene for it to go i mean and back in the olden days they would get a torch to throw in there so i don't, I don't have any torches there i mean that could Maybe I can make one. We'll have to pick a day when it's not raining. I think uh, there's not too many clouds. There's no clouds out right now. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but if we set up the pyre quick enough, we, we should be able to take advantage of that clear sky. I'm, I'm worried about smoke inhalation since we'll, there's gonna be such a big pyre. We might be breathing in a lot of the smoke. Maybe if we got matte some masks we might be able to to like some gas masks we might be able to remedy that problem one concern i have is what are we going to do if the fire does start catching on even like well, i mean we want to find a place where there where we don't think the fire will spread but just in case uh we need should have a backup plan in case the fire starts spreading uh we should bring some water but uh I don't know how much we would need. I mean, do do if someone has is like a fire. Tr I mean, well, I don't know if the fire department would be able to get there in time since we need to. I mean, the thing is, we need to go somewhere far enough away for no one to hear Cindy scream. But at the same time, we need to make sure that the fire department would be able to get there in time if the fire did start spreading. Oh, we also need to figure out a cover story. If, so if we do burn Cindy and then we need end up needing to call the fire department and they get there and find uh, Cindy's burnt remains that are still recognizable, we're gonna have to have a cover story for to cover our tracks so we don't get into trouble. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we should just say that we stumbled upon the pyre where and just found her burning and we and we brought the water to put out the flames but it wasn't enough so that's to there wasn't enough to save her so that's going to be our story if, if we get caught so remember to like comment subscribe ring the bell and have better friends than rick yolanda and beth